Guys, I'm heading down to a service call where there was a no cool, so the was coming on and off. So the heating works fine, but not the cooling. So we'll see if we have a stuck TXV maybe. Or else we might have, it might be just that the heating has running is running strips and then he thinks it's heating, but it's actually not heating. So we shall see. Like somebody's tearing down some land. Build themselves a subdivision. Alright guys, we'll check it out and see what's going on. And this train unit I have my Okay, I'm gonna see if there's any refrigerant in the unit that's not coming on. Not a whole lot. Might have an issue here. We're running in heat right now. You see we're hard to see. Just over 100, almost 300. So we're gonna put it back in the cooling to see if she pumps down again because it looks like a TXB is gonna be cold. Uh, boys, we're looking at a GAM 5 air handler train. Nothing stops the train, baby. It's kind of an interesting installation because I got to sit in between the drain here and the refrigerant lines that curve over here. And of course, I am no feather, so that is hard. But the GAM 5 should have a mechanical TXV. If this were the TAM 7, it would have an EEV. So I'm going to take and take a little peek at it on the inside just to make sure it, there's nothing obviously wrong with it, like the bulb is broken off dangling. Sorry. I'm open it up. Take a look. Looks like I was incorrect. There is a EEV here. Got a little motor on top. Let's see here. Take it off. Here we go. There we are. I'm gonna get the manual out so I can run through the checks for this thing, and then I'll let you guys know what I find on the flip side. All right, guys. What I did is I took this J3 plug right here in the corner. I was oming out these sensors first. I took the DC voltage while it was running and it matched up what I did, it had the fan on but not the AC and I want to see if the sensor DC voltage between these two leads on each one of these the black and the black and the orange and orange matched up with the temperature going through the unit which would have been around 70, 72 degrees it did I believe it was 1.6 volts DC and what I did next is it says to ohm them out to ground neither one of the sensors were grounded so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pins down here to test the EUV. We have an open test and close and I'm going to turn the AC back on and see if it'll open up. That means I know the sensor, uh, the uh, EEV works. I have my doubts whether the control works. We have the two blinks which is the internal failure. I'm thinking we might have a bad control but I'm going to go get the I-manifold out so I can keep tab on the pressures while I'm doing that test. So I'm going to get that set up and I'll be right back with you. we saw that the sensors look good we saw that the valve did not open when we did the test on it I went up to these connections here at the top which is the stepper motor I own those out and here we see we should have from brown to blue or yellow should be 46 ohms and from red to orange or white should be 46 ohms so I measured and all of them were fine except for one measured 60 ohms. So one of them was bad. Welcome back to Train Heat Pump Air Handler Service, day two. Okay guys, I'm gonna remove this board here, the EVC control. Then we're gonna remove the stepper motor and take that off as well. Replace both of those. Then we're gonna restart it. And hopefully the part of the train literature that said that's the problem is correct guys we have the new EVC board in place the plugs are put back on it and just a reminder the reason why we're changing the EVC board is we had a fault code on it that we had an internal failure once I checked the literature it says to replace the EVC board that's how I did it that's all I did I just read up and figured out what to do based on that
because I don't work on these every day. So I'm no train comfort specialist, but one day I might be, by golly. So I had to take the stepper motor off. The new one sitting in place has a little latch that hooks it to the line right there underneath it. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see here. There's an example of what it looks like. This is the old one. I'm going to undo it from the plug here and plug the new one in. Kind of dress it up a little bit. Guys, I have all these wires right here made it together. Green, red, yellow, and orange. Energized a reversing valve, fan, and compressor. So I can check it in cooling without having to go inside. Alright guys, we have a low running pressure right now. We're going to see how it balances out as the sensors take over there. If they, it'll start adjusting. And it's still running, so I consider that success. But let's see how she runs for the next few minutes. And hopefully she will run much better. Guys, I have my old school gear out here measuring liquid line temperature. We're going to see how much subcooling we have day like today you know we're running our 410a it's gonna be about 70 degrees outside we we'll probably look at our service facts there and get a rough idea see our suction pressure is low we'll let her run we just started i wanted to hook things back up got about 10 minutes we'll check it out again guys we have 54 degrees of superheat which is very high we change ourselves back to our other line and what we'll find is we have zero degrees of subcooling so i'm gonna go get some refrigerant so we can charge this thing up so it will work to notify him that he has a leak. Guys, we have one pound of refrigerant in the machine. Our head pressure is climbed to just below 250. Our suction pressure is up near 100 now, so we're looking a lot better. Still not good. So we're going to put in a little bit more and bring up that subcooling a little bit. I believe we're 78 degrees and we're looking at around 80, so we got one or two degrees of subcooling. We just need to keep going until we get about 10 up. Well, I've used about all of my r 14 I had left. We're going about three and a half pounds right now. Our superheat has dropped into the low 20s, so it's coming down to the normal range. It's not quite there yet. Our head pressure is up around 260, which is closer to what it's supposed to be according to the charging chart, which is around 270, 280. So I'm going to give it everything I, I have left in the bottle. I'm about to do a leak check anyway, so I'll come back with some more refrigerant and leak check. We'll see what's going on. Maybe it has something to do with that joint down there. I don't know. We shall see. Stay tuned on the next one for the exciting 15-seater train put in by Comfort Specialists. Just kidding, I don't know.